Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey, Conrail and Inscale, welcome back. So this video is an extra video. Uh, we're going to be covering the installation and design of the handbrake mechanism for the Toms or Industrial. So if you remember during our operations video uh, operating the SA39, um, we ran into some issues, um, partly because we didn't have anywhere to put the extra cars um, because the, of the grade outside of the Sibagaygi facility. So consequently, we had to back down and put cars on the uh, the main line. So we were having some issues because we were fouling the main line. And we were also exceeding the limits of our Form D. So uh, we had to come up with some kind of solution to keep the cars on the Toms River Industrial. But if you recall, uh, there was that slope outside, so the cars would just roll. So when I was trying to figure out, you know, a solution to uh, keeping those cars up on that that grade. Um, I remembered that I had watched a video um, a while back on a, a mechanism that was holding a caboose. And then uh, Newcastle Railroad Cohen uh, refreshed my memory uh, on the video. So the YouTube video, I'm going to th throw a, um, a little card up there so you guys can click over and watch it. Uh, it's from Mark Dance. Uh, Mark Dance has a, an extensive layout uh, featuring the uh, Burlington Northern and Canadian Pacific Railroads. And he devised a, a way to hold a caboose on a grade um, for his uh, Nelson Turn train. Um, and in that video, he used a tortoise, um, and you could see he, the pin would extend up and hold the, uh, the caboose in place. Now, Mark Dance didn't go into um, in detail on how he did it, so you know, I kind of did some research on my own and, and found the parts that I needed. So what I came up with for the... Um, handbrake mechanism was to use Circuitron's uh, remote signal actuator. So this is the device that you would use uh, in conjunction with a tortoise switch machine that would uh, actuate um, semaphore signals on, on track side and it can also be used for uh, crossing gates for um, uh, grade crossings. Okay so why don't you follow along and watch how we put it together and uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how it operates. So I start off the process by drilling a hole in between the ties and the roadbed so that I can insert the actuating rod. Then I insert the actuating rod and test it to make sure that the, it moves freely through the hole. I use a small bar clamp just to hold the actuating rod in place so I can see where the actuator needs to be mounted underneath the roadbed. Now we start assembling the actuator. The actuator has two major components. One is the actual actuating arm, and the other one is the base plate assembly where the uh, tortoise attaches to. Here I am inserting the cable into the actuating arm. Uh, the cable assembly actually works kind of like a choke cable would on a, like a lawnmower or, or a car. As you see, I'm just following the instructions step by step, um, you know, through the process because there is a lot of small steps and a lot of small parts to put together. Okay, so now I'm putting the cable assembly into the clamp and you have to just pay attention to what you're doing to make sure that you clamp it properly because or else the cable won't slide smoothly through that Teflon tube. So throughout the process, I just make sure that in between each step that I'm testing it just to make sure it operates properly. You make sure you remove all the flashing and make sure everything moves smoothly. Okay, so these screws are like, um, they're called uh, limiting screws. So it limits the motion of the arm and you can set the limit by how much the screw is turned in or out.
Now I'm getting started assembling the base plate assembly. This is where the tortoise uh, is attached to and then the cable attached to the base plate. This arm here is what translates the motion of the tortoise to the movement of the cable. So that's what I'm installing there. And there's a bunch of holes that you gotta line up before you put your screws in. So once you read through the instructions and figure out what you have to do, it goes fairly quickly. Like the in, they say, is the it takes longer to read the instructions than to actually put the uh, components together, and uh, it, it just takes a little head scratching just to figure out where you want to where you're going with it. So the series of screws I'm putting in here is what holds the mounting plate assembly for the tortoise. So you just want to get two of them started so it makes it easier just to put it all together. Now we're connecting the tortoise to the base plate and then tying in the uh, fulcrum arm to the tortoise. And there's Caitlin. Uh, yeah, model railroading is very challenging with a three and a half year old. But we get it done. She likes helping. She enjoys being down there. And it's usually she's playing on the floor or watching trains or something. Kind of hoping she stays interested in moderating because she's uh. She seems pretty interested with all the trains and stuff, so we'll, we'll see. I'm not going to push her. give the assembly a test with a 9 volt battery just to make sure that it operates smoothly and there's no binding and uh, just to check the operation. So here's what it looks like installed underneath. You can see there's the actuating arm. And then there's the tortoise and the base plate on the bottom. Now we're going to get started doing the work on the panel. First thing I do is I drill a hole for the red LED, which will be the indicator light. The red LED just gives a visual indication so crews know when the uh, handbrake is activated so they don't accidentally hit it with, when they're, with trains. Now 
Now I just install a, a toggle switch. Um, it's wired the same way that you would wire a toggle switch to operate any tortoise, you know, to, uh, for a turnout or any other application. Just uh, hook everything up and uh, get it ready for testing. Okay, so as you can see, uh, that's how we put it together. Um, what I ended up doing here on the panel is I ended up installing a um, red LED and uh, a switch. So now when you operate the switch, the pen extends. Also, what happens is the red LED illuminates to allow operators to know that the main line is fouled. Um, kind of just a visual indication so you don't forget that the pin is up and, and run into it with the uh, trains. So, and then when you retract the pin like that, the uh, red LED extinguishes on the panel. Okay, so now what ends up happening is, as you can see here, you would place the freight cars in position. You would extend the pin and allow the freight cars to sit down on the pin. And then once you're done, uh, pu you pull the slack back up off the pin, retract the pin, and your cars are free to move. Okay, so now this is how it looks from underneath when you operate it. So when I throw that turn, that toggle, it positions it so now that the, the uh, actuator bar arm goes up and it pushes the pin up through the road bed. And then when I go back the other direction, the actuator arm goes back down. So again, pin is extended, handbrake mechanism is retracted, and that's how it works. Okay, so there you go. So there's the handbrake mechanism. So, you know, just by sitting down and thinking out the solution and also, you know, a little inspiration, uh, you know, from Mark Dance, uh, I was able to come up with a good solution to the problem of keeping those cars up there. So I didn't go into the uh, actual operations of how, how the handbrake mechanism would be used. Um, but I, however, I am working on another video. Um, the next video that's going to be coming out uh, very shortly after the release of this will be operating the SA39. And this time around, we're going to incorporate some of the lessons learned from the previous time and also going to incorporate in the use of the new handbrake mechanism. So which leads me to my last point here uh, on this video. Um, so what you can expect over the next two weeks is, um, you know, the release of this video uh, is going to kick everything off. And then shortly thereafter, you're going to have the release of the SA operating the SA39. And then shortly thereafter will be followed up will be episode 18. Uh, episode 18. Um, yeah, I'm running into a lot of issues with, with so my supply chain. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm waiting for to complete the panel ha is on back order. So, you know, I'm just waiting for these parts to come in. And as of now, uh, videotaping this segment here, um, we're just not, we're not going to wait for the LEDs for the block detection because they're still on back order and now the date's been pushed back to the end of February. So what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and wrap up shooting episode 18, get it all together so you guys can see how it is, it, it, it's all done and how, it's, how it looks when it's uh, finished. And then we'll just come back at a later date when I get them white LEDs in and I'll just do a follow up. Uh, I'll also do a follow up because the LEDs for the southern secondary uh, panel are also on that order. So uh, when all that comes in, we'll just follow up on that. Okay, so that wraps it up. So thanks for following along. Uh, I hope you know that you guys picked up some stuff, and I hope this stimulated some brain cells and you know uh, inspired some people who may be having similar problems. And, and this is a good uh, you know solution to, to that problem of holding cars on a grade. So thanks for following along. Also, thank you to all our new subscribers who have joined us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Central Jersey Conrail and Scale.